Shout out to BWB, man. BWB, nigga. Shout out to BWB, man. You know what I'm saying? Big Wagon Buffs, man. Shout out to Big Wagon Buffs. Thank y'all for coming. BWB, baby. Shout out to TLP Sports Club, baby. Buff Nation, BWB, my bandwagon buffs. It's your man's Harry Billion. What's up, guys? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Hope your day and your weekend has been going wonderfully. I am back here with another video because one of our top hopefuls, at least someone that we all thought was going to stick around just because he had to transfer in, I didn't know that he was going to transfer out again. So, dude, try RA, aka Zeke. Co Suave on YouTube has entered the transfer portal. He was one of the hopefuls, somebody we all were rooting for. He's from the United Kingdom. He came through that NFL program through London and the UK, and we were all rooting for this kid. We all thought that he was going to make it. He had his channel on YouTube, and he was promoting his brand, and he was growing his brand, and he was locked in there. And I was for sure that he was actually going to make it, but I don't know what's happening, what went on, but I can't say I didn't see this coming. It is a little eerie on how I found this out because if you guys just watched the Shiloh video, the Shiloh graduation video that I just posted, this is a little eerie because in that video, I posted the footage of Sadu on the sidelines and I watched it. I promise you, I watched that footage all the way to the end and I'm like, he's on the sideline. It looks unmotivating for me. It looked a little weird. It looked a little eerie and a thought dropped into my spirit or into my head and I'm like, hmm, I wonder. He being on the sideline just it didn't sit well with me. There was just not enough going on at the practices and his name wasn't ringing in the practices or at that spring game and the way that he was just standing on the sideline just didn't feel correct to me. And you guys can chime in in the comments and let me know what you feel because I just felt like someone's sitting right with me. And I hope I didn't will him out of this team. <laughs> I don't think I have that kind of power, but something dropped in my spirit and it didn't feel right. But I want you to look at this footage. As you're looking at the footage, what do you think is going on here? As you see him walking on the sidelines, what is the body language telling you in this footage? Because most players, when they're on the sidelines, if they're going in the game, or if they are a player that is highly toted, if a player is an active player, if a player is in and out of the game, the way that they're standing on the sidelines is going to tell you a lot. Like the player that's next to him, that walks past him, their jersey is going to have some type of green on it. It's going to have some type of dirt on it if they play. And their posture, their gestures, the way that they stand, the confidence that they exude because they know that they're in and out of the game coach prime is using them or the coaches are using them it's gonna look a little different as you're watching this what are you getting what is it telling you i know for the most part players they hold the front of their pad just to feel comfortable when they're walking on the sideline but this body language just kind of spoke a little bit more to me and his posture him holding his pad and the way that he's walking on the sidelines it just feels like he's not part of this it feels like he was not part of this team and he feels disconnected he was not part of the starting lineup. He just feels disconnected to me. I want to know your thoughts, but just looking at this footage and looking at him in this footage, I don't see a lot of confidence in him. And something told me that he was disconnected from the starting lineup, and I didn't want to say it out loud, or I didn't want to say it at the time. I don't like to read anything into anything that I don't really know about. I feel like whatever was going on in his mind, I feel like whatever was going on in the mind of the coaches there, I feel like he was not going to be a starter. And I'll provide you guys this perspective also. I think the coaches, when they recruited, when they brought kids in, the first group of kids that they brought in, I think they had the highest hope for these kids and i think that they really thought that these kids were going to actually translate into something a little bit more than they initially thought i think as time went on and they realized themselves that power five football is a little different than what they expected and the goals that they have set for themselves i feel like those goals have changed a little bit because i think they realized that power five football is going to require a lot more than what they had in that locker room now you guys can correct me if you think i'm wrong i think things, some things are changing in the minds of these coaches because if you bring in a student if you bring in a player that you think is a dog and you think they're going to play you're going to give them the opportunity to play you're going to give them that opportunity to show themselves the kids that they brought in if they're not showing themselves approved or if they're not doing 
doing what the coaches think is necessary or is required to win at this level, they may lose interest in trying to develop that kid. And that kid might just kind of get lost in the sauce. They might get lost in the crowd. A lot of these walk-ons are playing. You got the Charlie Alpha dolls and you got other kids who are out there and they're running and they're playing. So if you see the dynamics in practices, in the practice footages that we've seen, if you see some of the things that's going on, like did you hear Traore's name? We were singing his praises early on, but I don't know that you heard his name or you heard anything going on at the time. A lot of that has to do with maybe his production in practice and a lot of that has to do with maybe the fact that coming from not playing football as long as some of these kids where football has been their career all along because he started football really late. And a lot of these kids at this level have been playing football from day one all the way until now. I'm not saying that he can't produce because he started late. I'm just saying that it could play a part in the reason why he kind of disappeared in the background of everything that was going on. Let's read some of the comments on Twitter on what people are saying. We got RPRF CEO. Gotta be able to block in this offense. Mr. Moore Rice. <laughs> Mr. Marie says, I saw it coming. Now he didn't elaborate saying I saw it coming. Wonder what exactly he saw coming and how did he see that coming? Brandon Pipkin says, he got to Boulder and realized they really weren't coming. I don't know if that was a pun or joke or whatever it was. And then KG said, he has some cryptic tweet a while back. I thought he would have been one of the first to earn his number and never did. This one's a head scratcher. And then Buffalo Bill says, crazy hard to make that team some guys are not cut out for prime style wow and then matthew says this one isn't great i think a lot of us really like this kid but he seemed to go mia once practice started did he play in the spring game brewster made several comments about being a three down tight end and from his vlog i noticed they were trying to put a lot of weight on him careless of death jklp sad i was really hoping this would work out scipio says i'm guessing he wasn't living up to expectations in blocking too bad and then joshua says irritating but oh well a couple of people are talking about him blocking and all of that okay so some people are saying that he needed to put some weight on or they were trying to put some weight on him the thing that you have to understand about tight ends tight ends are really blockers maybe he was trying to change his position i don't know if they were trying to put some weight on him they realized that coach prime is trying to win a championship coach prime wants to play the georgias he wants to play the top teams so if you're trying to win a championship or you're trying to stock up your team you got aspirations of when you get there not trying to be like a tcu if you're not trying to be outmatched or outsized by another team or by another sec conference team then you're going to try to make sure that you're watching tapes you're keeping track of all of the other teams that you might have to face in a championship situation you're going to try to bulk up if you look at shador shador has size now travis hunter is beefing up now a lot of these kids have put on a lot of muscle and this has to do with the conference that they're in power five is not a joke the players are beefier and they're bigger and they're going to be big and fast so you can't just have a bunch of speedy gonzalez's you're gonna have to have the weight <laughs> somebody mentioned in the comments in the shallow video they said shallow better learn how to wrap up because him just hitting people and they're falling down it's not gonna be enough that's right because these kids are much bigger you hit them and it's not just gonna go down all the time the skill position players the way that they hit they're hitting you on the run depending on how they hit you on the run they're gonna go down but they're not always gonna go down so you're gonna have to learn how to wrap up that is definitely true i do agree to that but understand that cornerback safeties they are not the guys that hit to wrap up that's not their thing they hit on the thigh they understand how to hit you they understand when you're on the run they understand when to go for that hit they understand when to take you off your leg because your legs are in motion your legs are alternating high on the ground off the ground on the ground off the ground so they learn in their position groups they learn in practice when you're supposed to go for the hit you cannot go for the hit when their legs are planted you have to go for the hit when that leg goes up once the leg goes up and you hit them on that thigh or you hit them low you hit them below the waist more than likely they're going to go down you don't always have to wrap up if you know how to hit them and when to hit them so that's very important for that position now when you're tackling when you're in the trenches when your position group is closer to the trenches you have to definitely know how to wrap up they teach them a little differently when it comes to that but if Sadu didn't have the weight if he didn't have the bulk that they needed to be a tight end to play those championship caliber teams then him putting on weight was necessary because then he's not going to be a small guy because you got to block some really big dudes you're tight end your primary job is to block yes you're in the wide receiver group you are in the wide receiver ecosystem but your primary job is not to be catching the ball if you're a gronk or you're one of those big guys your job is to get to those big guys and make sure you're blocking those big guys i don't know if that's the truth but him putting on weight makes a lot of sense i don't know that he had a tight end stature 
I mean, just look at the footage right here. He doesn't look like a big tight end. Maybe they should have moved him to the wide receiver slot, or maybe they should have changed his position to put him in a better position to be able to win. Because he is big, but he's not big as a big championship caliber tight end. That size is not a championship caliber tight end. He needed to be a little bit bulkier. If you look at Gronkowski, the Kelseys, they're tall and they're big. If you look at the Georgia teams, they're going to have those big tight ends. And these tight ends job is to block primarily. And then of course, them catching the ball when it's needed. When everybody's being blocked down the field, the tight end is going to be closer to the trenches where if the quarterback is in trouble, he can just dip it off to the tight end. And then the tight end can get a few yards and we can keep the ball moving down the field. They brought him in and they were ready to groom him. But I don't know that his grooming was progressing at the pace that they wanted. Coaches are learning. They're learning who their opponents are going to be. Who are we playing? They're watching tips. They have data that we don't have. That's another thing that we have to look at. The DMVR podcast, in one of their episodes, they talked about a data company that the university was using to get data on these players, to also get data on recruiting. The recruiting data gives you numbers that we're not privy to, things that we don't see. So they have a lot of data that they're ascertaining from this recruiting service that they're using that is telling them some of these kids have to go. No matter how we looked at it, no matter how we were cheering for them on the outside, some of the kids that we're looking at that we thought were going to be good enough for this scheme or for this process that coach has in place to win now that's not good enough for them and that's why you're seeing some of these higher prospects that we were cheering for you see them leaving and it's necessary because if you look at some of the prospects that we're getting now if you look at some of the beefy kids that, that we're seeing committing or coming over i'm like well yes this is the size that i've been looking for because when i look at the georgias and i look at the sec teams these are the sizes of these kids that i'm like yeah this is what I was expecting to see. I wasn't seeing that. And yeah, I mean, there was a couple of them, but I wasn't seeing that for sure. But now we're seeing the prospects. We're seeing some of the commits that are coming in. We haven't secured them all the way, but some of the ones that I'm going to put on the screen right now, when you're seeing these kids, you're like, aha, there we go. Now they're cooking with gas. So that's what I was looking for. This is what we're trying to see. This is exactly what we need to see because if you're going to win now, then you need to have the team, the product that's going on the field, that team needs to be able to win now because we're not going to go into a championship situation and we're going to be outmatched, outsized, and they're going to beat us really bad. We don't want that. And I believe Coach and his team, they are aware of who is coming on that field and they're trying to answer those questions in all of the prospects that you see on the list that are coming we don't have the list here but we see the individuals that are coming if you look on your screen i'm putting a lot of them on your screen currently so you can see these are the prospects that are coming even though we don't have the full list here this is what's happening these are the prospects that we can wrap our head around and say okay fine this list is finally coming together this is finally happening i'm harry b and that was the liberian perspective tlp sports club Blah.